Hey boys and girls, this is Alex with Catch Happy and Sweeney Sports here in Napa. Today we're gonna dive deep into striper trolling. We're gonna see if we can attempt to get something like that or smaller. First things first, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what the striper fishing for striper is like, especially like trolling. Then we're gonna go into the rods. I got all these prepared for you. We're gonna talk about reels, got those prepared for you. We're gonna talk about the way to hook them up, the line itself, you know, braid versus mono kind of argument or discussions people are having. Then we're gonna go into some lures and what works best when and how, and then we dive into tactics. It's gonna be a little bit of a long video, so grab your coffee and let's learn together. Kidding me? It's not gonna trash. Oh, oh, you got another one. Possibly. No, 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 don't, 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 Really good fish here. Have to get yourself one of these. Take a look. All right, we're, we're in business. We're in business. Okay, let's start talking about striper. Uh, it's a striped bass. They habitate in salt, brackish, or freshwater. Very successful species. They've adopted very well. There's a lot of them out there. In fact, some people, they're thinking that they're invasive species because they... They actually do eat the salmon fingerlings as they go up Sacramento River Delta and stuff like that. So, but striper is a predator fish that has, is very aggressive. It would eat almost anything that moves. You can get it on bait fishing, you can get it on lure fishing, and you can get it on trolling. Today we're talking about trolling. A um, couple things, this fish is not very heavily regulated except the minimum size and number of, of, of fish you can keep. So there's two fish per person, and they have to be 18 inches or longer to keep. Other than that, you don't need report cards. You just go out and fish for them. Let's talk about taste. I'm going to do some cooking videos. My family loves striper. We eat striper. It's a, it's a really nice white flaky meat. Uh, if you fillet it right, some lemon, some butter, um, some greens on top, whatever spice rub you like, man, they come out really, really good. But before you can cook it, you have to catch it. So let's talk about the rods for trolling. So um, trolling techniques I'll cover maybe towards the end of this video, but the principle of it is you're in a boat, you have two rods out or however many, um, you know, depending on regulations. So for example, Napa River or Ocean, one rod per person. You know, lakes, you control two rods. For example, Los Vicaris is full of stripers and we always troll like three or four rods for two people because you can do up to two, two rods per person. So just make sure you check your regulations. But you got the rod back there, you have lure, you know, hopefully plain, uh, you know, 80 feet to 100 feet behind the boat, 50 feet maybe, just depends. And once you get a takedown, you reel in the fish. Sounds pretty simple because it is. It's not complicated, but the fish still is smart enough to know not to eat stuff that looks weird, smells funky, or has a visible uh, elements of it that don't look natural. So. I'm gonna help you with all those things today. Let's start with rods. So one, um, some of you know that I have this uh, particular rod in a kit at catchhappy.co. We, we sell a full on striper kit, but this is my favorite trolling rod and I'll explain why. So first of all, this is a Phoenix XG4T, okay? It's as glass rod, it feels really amazing. It's super light. If you guys are around Napa, come by to Sweeney. It's just to touch this thing, it's, it's great. So feature number one of a good trolling rod and feature number two, those two things you have to have right. Number one is fairly solid backbone. You see how this, I keep hitting stuff. Um, you see how this handle and the backbone is kind of a thicker and then it obviously thins out and you know gets nice to a little bit, um, nice and flexible tip so you want this backbone to have some power because if you get fish like this well that's probably a little overkill for this rod but you can probably work it but anything between 18 and 30 inches this rod will handle just great and that's going to be the majority of your catches Let, let's face it right um now the tip the second part that is very important on a striper rod is the tip you want this flexibility you want this play here's why because once you have it in the water and you have a lure, you know, that it's that is 12 feet under, 
and you're pulling that four miles an hour, this is going to have a load like this. Okay, so it's going to be loaded. That what you want is you want the you want to visually be able to see what your lure is doing. Is it playing right? Did it get into a stick? For example, I really like to bump the bottom with these deep divers. I'll explain how that works in a bit. So, you know, you hit the bottom, you come up, hit the bottom, you come up. All the sediment gets released with that bump, and I and I know the fish key in on it. And this is how we get a lot of bites, right, from these lures. But there's a downside to it. The downside is you can catch, you know, grass, debris, all kinds of other stuff. And if that's, uh, if you do that, your lure won't play the right way. And you will know this rod communicates all of this, right, with this really nice flexible tip. Then once you have a takedown, you can absolutely see, again, with the flexibility and just the, the way this rod is constructed, you will see the takedown, you will see the fish on the end of your rod. A lot of times uh, when we fish with stripers or my friends or anybody else I know, guides, you can tow a striper for you know, 20 minutes because they avoid pain, they're gonna swim with you. So if you don't know, if your rod is not sensitive enough, you will never know and they'll come off and you won't even know. But a lot of times we tow a 20 inch, even 18 inch, 22 inch stripers, you know, not knowing they bit because it just, it happens. They avoid pain, they swim with your, with your setup. So if you're not paying attention or your rod is not communicating, you may lose that fish. So that's your top of the, top of the line rod. Um, I highly recommend it, it's $189, it's from Phoenix. It's reasonably priced for the performance it's gonna give you, okay? I'm gonna talk to, there's, there's two others in between. So there's one for $95, this is called Akuma SST. Uh, the various uh, length in those, but a lot of those work 8.6 foot is what I like. Uh, it's a two piece, which is nice, because this Phoenix is a single piece. So sometimes packing that in the car, hmm, might be a little bit difficult. But uh, this is definitely going to be uh, uh, your best choice. And there's Daiwa uh, North Coast, which is a salmon steelhead, also striper reel. And by the way, you can do salmon steelhead. It's a similar kind of uh, game and fight. So uh, you can do trolling with these, all these rods. But I'm going to actually go down to Salilo. And I'm going to say, look, if you are not wanting to spend $189, let's call it $200 with tax, Consider spend, spending, well, what did I say, 65? This Salilo is a great rod. This particular one um, is the heavy action. And the heavy action, what it means is it has this flexibility in the tip. And that's kind of what you want. You see this is not as flexible as the Phoenix, right? You can see it kind of moves as a whole thing, right? Versus it has this kind of a give where... You know, it's a lot more communicate, communicative to you as far as what your lure is doing and what the bite is like. But this would do a very good job because it's 8.6. It's got the length um, and it will communicate to you via a band like this in a rod. And then you'll still see it. So for the $65, this is a killer deal. And you will be able to be very happy. I use this for trolling as well. Um, now that I switch to these, it's like... <laughs> They're too delicious, too, too good, uh, but this would work just as well, and you will enjoy doing it, and you won't spend a lot of money on it. So this particular, again, heavy action, CE-C-862HA, if you want to know the complete model number, this thing will do wonders for you. So uh, consider uh, something in between, which is Akuma SST series with Daiwa North Coast, okay, or get either top of the line or this budget priced, still very good guides, very good rod. So hopefully that gave you a good idea on how to pick a rod for striper trolling. Okay, we're talking striper trolling and let's talk about the reels. Um, I have two examples here for you. I'm sure there are a hundred different, well, maybe you know, a few dozen different uh, reels you can use for striper trolling, but a couple of things I'm going to talk, you, talk to you about that make the difference between landing a fish and just kind of getting skunked potentially or not landing as much fish, as many fish as you need. So 
First of all, it's I'm going to show you this Akuma 354D. It's a $185, $184.99 reel. A uh, couple of features that you're looking for in a striper trolling reel. Number one is, well, number one and two. One is your reel counter. Two is your line capacity. Um, line capacity is not as important. It's not a sturgeon. You know, it's not, unless you get something like this, then it might spool you no matter what you have here. But in general, you're not going to worry too much about line capacity, but there's, there's a reason why you want a little bit more. Okay, so let me talk about this particular. This is a cold, Akuma Cold Water 354D. It's got a nice, easy to use, very, very simple manual or analog counter. Okay, it will fit about 200 yards of, uh, say, you know, 40 pound braid or 30 pound braid or maybe 20 pound mono. Okay, mono line. And uh, that's, that's, in my opinion, that's quite a bit, not plenty. This reel also very, very easy to use. There's not a lot going on on it, so it's it's easy to get used to, easy to use. Um, another thing I like about this is big handle. When you are fighting a striper on like a glass rod or on the Salilo or any other rods, you know, your rod typically is not a stick. You have some sensitivity in the tip, so you need a you need little bit of power to be able to get them or turn them around. Along with the back, uh, back end, like the strength, of backbone of your rod, you're gonna need a good grip on your handle. So I like this setup. This $185, it's really, really nice, and it pairs really well with the S-Glass Phoenix X4GT. Um, that's, or XGT4, I should say. This is the one that I recommend. You can also find it on catchhappy.co. It comes as a kit with this baby filled up with line. Now, next option, I'm going to talk to you about something a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter weight, a little bit lower profile. Um, I think this pairs up really nicely with the Salilo. This is a, uh, a Bu Garcia Max DLC. It fits probably about 150 yards of line in a similar, uh, similar size. We talked about 30 to 40 pound braid or 20 pound mono. Um, it does everything you need to do. Um, but the nice thing about it, it's a digital counter, which has a backlit. So if you troll it at night, that comes in pretty handy. Um, it's a good reel, easy to use. Again, the price on this one is $120, $119.95. Very good deal. And it, the way it pairs up with the Salilo is actually quite nice. These are the rigs I use myself as well. Not sure if the camera is focusing, but um, it's a perfect marriage right here perfect combo really fun fight to get yourself this combo again at catchhappy.co or you can get it anywhere else your choice so that's the info on the reels i have for you if you have any questions go ahead and put them into the uh comments next let's talk about the line all right we're talking striper trolling techniques and i'm going to cover line so what line should you get if you're into trolling for striper, okay? There are two schools of thought. Uh, there's always an opinion, right? Everybody has an opinion, which is fine, and I do as well. Take mine. I fish a lot, right? I run the shop here. I fish weekly. I bring friends. It's, it's, it's just a possession of mine. And I have a lot of guides on catchhappy.co who I talk to all the time. And um, my recommendation is it's either braid to mono or straight up mono. So here's what I'm talking about. Um, I would consider just spooling up your reel with like a 30 pound braid. I don't like heavy stuff. I don't like go 80, 90, 60 pounds. I think 30 or 40 pounds is just fine. My recommendation is 30. You can fit more line. Um, so this particular one, for example, is like $30 for uh, 300 yards of it. So that should be able to spool either of those reels, no problem. Um, next thing is you want... If you are doing the braid, you know, some people say that striper is not line shy. In other words, they won't see the line, won't care. So you can tie your lure directly to your braid. And I think in some cases that is true. But why would you risk this? Look at the size of the eye. I don't know if you guys can see it. I mean, this thing is big. They can see your line. Would they care? Maybe not. But what is the chances that... You know, some of the bigger ones, some of the survivors, you must, you must think they have seen a thing or two. 
and they uh, can discern and understand, you know, there's a, if it looks weird, they might not go for it, right? So if you are doing the braid, do yourself a favor, connect this uh, crane swivel. Uh, we recommend size five. Uh, it's just a barrel swivel, basically. Connect it to the end of the braid and then put your, um, add a tw like a 25 pound or 30 pound leader. This particular one is, is P-Line uh, fluorocarbon. That's what you want to go for, fluorocarbon, 25 pounds. This was made in Japan, at $12.99. It's really worth the investment to get, um, to get a, a nice roll of fluorocarbon to put on the end of your braid. That way, you know, and let's say that leader should be, I don't know, you can make it two to four feet. It doesn't need to be huge. Okay, as long as you're not tying your braid directly to the lure. Now, there are cases when I do that, and I do that when the water is really muddy, um, then it really kind of doesn't matter. But it doesn't take a lot of extra time, and I would recommend doing it. Alternatively, I actually spool out of my reels with the 20-pound mono straight up. It's a thinner line. Again, I like lower profile for my fishing gear. Now, you guys do what you want to do. Okay, you, you want to have an 80-pound in there. Absolutely, people catch them with 80-pound lines all the time. So I'm, I'm talking about braid. But I like smaller profile stuff, less obtrusive, um, you know, not to spook the fish. So in this case, I would spool it up straight up with a 20-pound floor clear, call it a day, and you will catch a whole bunch of fish all day long. Part of the reason why is because the, the trolling rods, if you got the right one, are very, very forgiving. So there's a lot of give and a lot of play. Your reel should do most of the work. You should play with your drag as the fit, if you, as you're fighting the fish. Shouldn't be horsing them. So I don't know if more than 20 pounds really matters. I mean, I can pull a 40 pound fish with a 20 pound line. So that's just me. I'm more on the lighter, less is more side of things. You know, lighter rod, lighter line, less connections. That's my game. But braid to mono works just as well. And that way you, you kind of have a little bit more, um, there's more forgiveness in your gear if something goes wrong with your fight. One other thing I should add, um, make sure you use the right size swivel clip to connect to your lure. So once you, if you're using braid, you have your mono leader. So you braid to the barrel swivel, right? Barrel swivel to your mono leader, mono leader to the snap swivel. Okay, this particular one is size seven. Uh, it's rated for 19.8 pounds. Take a look, see, at your swivels. The last thing you wanna do is lose a fish. Also, make sure you're not using the ones that are rusted out because they, it weakens the metal and it's quickly gonna become undone and your fish will swim away with your leader or with your lure and you'll never you know, be able to boat it and that day it's not gonna be as fun as it could be. So use the right size barrel swivel, right size snap swivel. Those are recommendations as far as line and connections go. Okay, next let's talk about lures. I'm gonna show you some more conventional lures that people use for catch a striper. One of those is a Spro, uh, uh, Spro Aku, Aruku Shad, or similar to rattle traps. Uh, the idea of this particular lure, ah, it's super sharp, folks. Nice Kabakatsu hooks. Super, super sharp. See, I'm bleeding already. This thing has a gold back. There are a million different colors. And um, different colors operate um, or attract fish in different stages of their hunt. So um, my recommendation to, is to have multiple colors because sometimes this craw dent color will work. Sometimes it will never work. Sometimes the shad pattern works best. Sometimes you just can't get them off the one with the red head and white body, right? And there, nothing else works. But most of the times I find the um, uh, gold colored pattern works really well, um, especially in rivers where there's a flow and the water is not super clear. Uh, these are a lot easier to see. For some reason, they key in on them really good. Uh, we sell... Uh, the one called Golden Boy, it's the, essentially this, but fully gold with black back. 
on catchhappy.co, you can check that out. But the idea of rail traps, first of all, when you put it like 80, 90 feet behind the boat, it will dive about six, seven feet, and it will stay underwater, and it will just act erratically. And you see, hear the sound? Yeah. So it's designed to attract fish with its action as well as noise, and that's really, really effective. Now, um, the trick with these is to troll them anywhere between three to four and a half miles an hour. It just depends if you go with the tide, against the tide, you have to experiment, but you're looking to know if your lure is playing right, you're looking at the tip of the rod and you, you're looking for this sort of a tap, 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 tap. And that's what, again, why I prefer sensitive rods because I can totally tell the, the action of my lure. But you have to balance the sensitivity with power because this fish uh, can get pretty nasty on you. Okay, so uh, I recommend these spros or rattle traps um, and have like four, five, six different patterns in your tackle box. Over time, you can collect them or just buy them all at once. Um, it, it really is that important to have color. You should change colors every, every about 20 minutes. I'm not gonna troll with the same color over 20 minutes and, real, and just hope that something changes. You gotta keep changing colors to see. One other very important piece is the juice or scent you put on it. But let me talk about the wild thing first. So these things we've created here at Sweeney Sports Custom, you know, we've been around 50 years. And over time, we've sort of customized this. We've customized this Predator deep diving minnow by Pili, an exceptional lure on its own. But when you add this tail and um, like a little warm on the end, and we have very different colors. This one's called Italian Stallion, just because of its pattern. Um, we have cotton candy, we have rainbow warfare, we have, um, there's, you know, jungle warfare, all these other patterns. And again, it's a very similar technique. Um, depending on the day, on the type of water, on the tides, and the kind of bait that is available to the fish, they will key in on certain color. Um, and you want to keep changing these until you get the right uh, combination. And then you'll see, it'll start getting bites. Now let's talk about scent. So what I do is I, every time I lower this in the water, I apply fresh scent. You're doing it for a couple of different reasons. This particular one is sardine. You can use essentially any scent out there, okay? But you're going to put them on the sides. You're going to put it on the bill a little bit and put it right on the tail because it spreads it out nicely. Not only it attracts fish, it creates a little bit of a, like a film of this uh, scent, and it's all natural uh, scent in the water to attract fish, but it also helps to get rid of human smell. And that's kind of an essential piece, because again, one small advantage. You know, you keep, you keep adding those advantages, and it's gonna be the difference between, uh, you know, 10 fish day and zero fish day, or two fish day, or four fish day, 10 fish day, right? You know, le smaller gear, less of a footprint, you know, smaller lines, you know, more sensitive rod, you know, better reel to be able to fight them off and turn them around when you need to. Um, better lures, applying scent, and then finally experimentation. A lot of experimentation with speed, locations. You need to know how to read your radar or your sonar. I'm gonna talk about that next. But suffice to say, if you want to grab these, these are only available at catchhappy.co. I'm proud to say these are amazing lures. In the next section, I'm going to talk to you about the action, how to actually use them, and some of the tactics around striper patrolling. But if you want to pick up uh, a couple for yourself, they're $14.99, reasonably priced. They're at catchhappy.co. Okay, let's talk about the trolling tactics for striper uh, striper trolling um, first where are you trolling um, the best places I found uh, when you're trolling the rivers you know it's Sacramento Delta it's uh, Napa River or any other, other river where they are um, there could be in two different locations right they could be in the main channel itself maybe towards the sides again it depends on the tide if the tide is incoming typically Typically, I see them 
in the main channel, right? In the main channel, not in the sloughs, in the main channel, kind of sitting there and waiting what comes from the ocean, from the bay, from the ocean, and they're ready to ambush it. So typically they'll sit in depressions, so the water flows, they'll come up and grab it. So if you troll with the water, you'll get bit. If you troll against the water or against the tide, you'll get bit. It's kind of like that kind of a game, but you have to find it. What you're looking for on your radar, on your sonar, right? If you have one, you're looking for these little banana signatures, two or three of them sitting behind, let's say, a depression in, uh, in the bottom. Okay, then you know, then you can go around and troll them. So uh, a lot of times when I get on the water, I'll go look. And because I already know that, hey, outgoing tide, they're going to be in the sloughs by the cuts, okay? In the sloughs by the cuts where the water kind of basins are emptying into the slough and the slough is emptying into the river and the river main emptying, emptying into the bay, right? And they're sitting by those cuts, by those sloughs, by the entrance to the sloughs and waiting for the bait fish to flow right into their mouths, okay? So that's kind of where they are. So typically I would spend maybe 30 minutes or so running around and looking to see what I see. Sometimes like I know places where they can be. So sometimes you get impatient and hook a couple lures and start trolling right away in places I already know there might be and then metering while I troll. That's also a possibility. But you know, my recommendation is go around and look for them, see what that you can see and then troll where they are instead of you know going really slow to places where they're not right and spending all that time trolling empty you know empty water um, so when you're trolling uh, let's talk about back sets so you have I talked about the reels in my other videos as well as in this one I talked about the reels and the counters right so this is how you know you want a back set so something like a deep diver like this wild thing Italian stallion I have my hand as an example this thing will dive yeah, 7 to about 13 feet, depending on how far it is from the boat and how fast you're going. So they're designed to be trolled between 3 and a half or 3 to 4.5 miles per hour. Okay, And when you know the right action is your tip of the rod. Again, you want that sensitivity. The tip communicates that, hey, they're doing what they need to be doing. Um, I usually back set this 70 to 100 feet behind the boat. When I fish in 12 feet or less, I want this thing to pop on the bottom, pop the bottom, and release all the sediment, you know, make the popping sound. And if there's a stripers around, there are stripers around on the hunt, they're in brush or somewhere else, uh, around where this lure is go moving through water. First of all, there's noise. Second of all, there's action. Third of all, there's scent. And finally, when it hits the bottom, it attracts a lot of attention. Then you get bit, then you get fish on the, on the boat. So this is what I do. Um, if you get tangled up, this is where your line capacity comes in. I usually just go turn around, you know, reel in as I turn around, and I go free up my lure. I don't really lose them too often. Sometimes I lose it due to rusted uh, swivel clip or something like that. Sometimes I lo lose it because the, um, the snag is just, you know, too, it's just, uh, uh, there's like a tree on the bottom and there's no way I can free this up. But most of the times I can free them up. So my typical back set at 75 to 110 feet behind the boat. Again, they're not very boat shy. I've caught them 35 and 50 feet behind the boat. But I like those longer back sets, again, to eliminate another possibility Another reason for fish to be spooky, scared, and not take your bait, which is boat noise. So again, remember, small things do add up. Really good fishermen have those small things that they do um, add up to a big day on the water. Okay, this was a long video. I've shared a lot of knowledge. This is what I've gained thus far. I continue to learn. So please put all your questions and comments and feedback into the comments. We learn together. We fish together and we improve together. Uh, appreciate your time, and we'll see you on the next video.